Thank you for watching and welcome back to your number one premier show on matters climate. Now, the government continues to advance the 100% renewable energy agenda. Manufacturers are, however, accusing the government of a mismatch between its policies and their implementation. Jasmine Murani reports. The manufacturing industry in the country has time and again decried the high cost of power and the adverse effects it has had on the sector. Renewable energy like solar power is much, much cheaper. So the question would be, why are we not having an avalanche? Why are people not solar everywhere? Yes, solar everywhere is, uh, is a good idea, but with caution. Two months ago, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers made clear the industry's readiness to shun Kenya power by generating captive power. This while appearing before the National Assembly Committee on Energy. And while this would mean reprieve for not just industry but also consumers in equal measure, the transition is complicated. Government may have passed favorable regulations, but industry says the implementation of the same is wanting. Let's say for for instance, the provisions on uh, on captive power, captive power where you need uh, you need to generate and consume for your own use, we are still capped at one megawatt without due due process of uh, licensing. Now, when you go for licensing. The feeling is that it takes a little bit too long. The cost of taxation, the import taxes on the components uh, have become a huge barrier to um, entrepreneurs. Uh, but secondly, and I think even more importantly, has been the lack of uh, strategy and communication on the full electricity grid um, expansion plan. Without that, uh, businesses and consumers are un uncertain whether they should invest in the solar equipment or whether they should not. Renewable power such as solar is even harder to implement. Why? Because... Cost of money, if you're borrowing from local banks today, you'd, you'd be lucky if you get it at 14%. Otherwise, then it depends on uh, somebody must do a big scale so that he can attract international financing. The government's selective approach to creating incentives on certain solar components has made it unattractive. This has been confusing to industries looking to make the shift to renewable captive power. Those fiscal incentives are only targeting the, a few components that are specific to solar and not full installation. And that makes it complex, especially for solar engineers and solar project developers. Worse still, inherent challenges with solar power, such as its unreliability and its storage, have made it a bigger pain for the industry. Industry and uh, manufacturing, for that matter, is taking solar as complementary to Kenya power. So that the component of solar offsets the bill. And this is where green hydrogen comes in, except we would have to wait until 2027. That is when Kenya will have its first green hydrogen plant. By 2030, we should see the prices of green hydrogen really uh, decreasing by about 60%. And that will really then um, make this, it will bring that sense to using green hydrogen in our industrial processes as our feedstock also in chemical and also in decarbonizing sectors that we can't electrify. So what can the government do to ease the transition for the manufacturing sector? The government can align its practices, particularly administrative practices when it comes to implementing uh, tax exemption. It's still a tedious process, it's not automatic. Kenya continues to leap towards 100% renewable energy, the challenges notwithstanding. Will the government heed the industry's call to pave the way for renewable, affordable energy for manufacturing? That remains to be seen. Jasmine Murani for KTN News. Thank you, Jasmine, for that story. And gentlemen, right there, Kenyans expressing themselves on high taxes, and uh, which is making them which is making it very difficult for them to invest in renewable energies. Now, as we continue to talk about this briefly, just 
How bad is the situation as we speak for the power providers? Mm, I think the challenge is solvable. Mm -hmm. Let's start from there. Mm -hmm. The challenge is solvable. I think with the good, uh, good with the goodwill, uh, we can have solutions because when you look at um, uh, uh, at the high tariffs which are being charged, uh, I think the government can do something. Can uh, pro can provide uh, subsidies and uh, can also provide uh, incentives so that now uh, guys can be encouraged to invest in uh, in uh, green energy or to invest in uh, renewable energy. But again, going back to research, uh, there are several areas of, of the energy supply which have never been tapped. Uh, one of the, the biggest energy supply is uh, tidal, tidal power. Uh, Kenya has again a great potential. A few minutes ago we talked about Kenya having a very conducive environment for solar energy, solar energy generation. And also Kenya having a very strong wind speed uh, which encourages uh, a wind turbine installation. Uh, when you go to Mombasa and the Lamu, those are areas which have uh, a great potential in terms of uh, tidal uh, power investment. I don't understand when we talk about uh, Kenya power. Uh, I, I don't understand when we talk about K Kenya Post Authority facing uh, uh, power blackouts and uh, there is ocean there. What they need to do, again, again this one has to be informed by research. Uh, and while I was looking at, the, at some of the visibility studies which have been done, and they said that uh, Mombasa and Lamu have the potential of tidal power. So if, uh, if the visibility studies have indicated that there is a high potential of tidal power, then what the best thing to do is to have a policy paper and implement it. We should never face uh, power blackouts in, in, in national uh, facilities like Kenya Post Authority. The other day we had uh, a power blackout in, uh, across the country. Across the country, yes. across the country actually. And uh, was it warranted? No. I, I, I think we need to uh, come and talk. Let us, have in, let us bring all voices together and uh, identify, identify the, some of the gaps, some of the existing gaps to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Because uh, solving the problem starts with its identification. Thank you. Yeah, um, yes. As we talk about this issue, um, as Africa, we had Africa Climate Summit that came here in Nairobi mm -hmm. and that came with the Nairobi Declaration. As leaders plan to go for COP28 in Dubai later in the year, mm -hmm. what should be their message to the international community? And as Africans, what must we see African governments doing before even going to international partners requesting mm -hmm. for funding for loss and damages? Yeah, uh, the thing is, one of the uh, challenges that uh, we are faced with is uh, investments going into small-scale uh, renewable energy projects, the decentralized renewable energy projects. Large projects are able to attract funding, uh, but um, the small projects uh, get um, facilities at a very high uh, interest rate. Um, and during the Africa Climate Summit, uh, one of the exciting things that happened is Kenya together with other African countries, and by the way, Kenya in leadership, uh, they rolled out, they launched uh, an accelerated partnership for renewables in Africa. And uh, the initial countries that have signed up to the partnership are Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda, uh, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Sierra Leone. There are six countries. And uh, the partner countries are German and Denmark, uh, being hosted by IRENA. Mm -hmm. uh, we are hoping that within this initiative, um, uh, we will have African-led uh, consultations where um, these issues around renewable energy development bottlenecks on the continent are addressed through the partnership. And some of the um, um, issues that can be addressed through the partnership is uh, availing resources for decentralized energy and systems. systems. So that this initiative is not just funding large-scale projects, but also those decentralized projects that focus on rural economies are being financed uh, uh, sustainably. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of that, as we go to the COP, the COP presidency, which is uh, United Arab Emirates, yes. um, have set out a goal of having a decision around tripling renewable energy targets for the world. What does that mean for Kenya or for Africa? Uh, because of the global 
investments that have been going to renewables. Not much has been coming to Africa. Actually, Africa only attracts about 2% of the global investments going into renewables. So if we are going to talk about tripling renewable energy targets uh, as a decision at COP28, then this should also mean something for Africa, that we need to shift uh, the investments uh, pathway for Africa. And um, at, at, at Africa Climate Summit, there was also an outcome where Africans want to increase uh, the renewable energy capacity on the continent from the 56 gigawatts uh, by last year to 300 gigawatts by um, 2030. That's like five times. Mm -hmm. This will require investments. And where are we going to attract these investments? Of course, Africa is suffering a climate challenge that it did not contribute to. Yes. But Africa also needs to avoid future emissions mm -hmm. as it develops. Mm -hmm. So as a way of helping Africa avoid future emissions, because if Africa was to contribute to the problem, then we'd be living in fire. Yeah. So if Africa was to avoid emissions, then global uh, uh, responsibility or solidarity has to be there. Mm -hmm. And especially rich countries that have developed on the back of fossil fuels and have brought us the problem, mm -hmm. need to take responsibility and offer support uh, to uh, African countries, including Kenya, through technological transfer, but also finances that are able to be invested in this ambitious uh, uh, increasing renewable energy capacity that Africa has. And uh, Datari, I want you now to speak to people who are watching us today on the importance of being aware of environment, protecting your environment, taking care of what you have so that you don't add to the emissions out there. Because we have just to, 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 to be honest, it all starts with you and I, if we play our role, then combine that with 52 million Kenyans, then the emissions are going down. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, what you need to stop is a blame game mm -hmm. and uh, work as a team. And uh, know that uh, climate change is not playing with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, if we keep on playing around, it will totally ruin us and ruin our lives and contribute to high levels of poverty. So the thing is, let us take responsibility. Let's plant as many trees as we can. I we do understand that, uh, of course, some conditions can call for uh, cutting down trees, but any tree you cut, try to replace it with two or three. Try to plant two or three trees. And um, let, let's keep our environment clean. Let's sensitize our communities back in the rural uh, uh, zones as well as in urban uh, zones. And uh, let us support the executive. Let us support, let the, actually, in as much as we talk about inclusivity, the, the executive has its own role. Mm -hmm. The legislature has its own role, and judiciary has its own role. And, and we, and are, we the are the people, mm -hmm. and uh, we can dictate the path in which Kenya takes mm -hmm. as we head towards uh, 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 2030, where we are talking about 100% achievement of clean energy. Remember, we are living in for the industrial, revol for the industrial revolution. We cannot ignore that. We are living in for the industrial revolution and all sectors of economy needs to be, needs to be supported. Agriculture, it needs to be well supported. Mm -hmm. uh, their activities need to be provided with electricity so that uh, they can improve on their uh, farming uh, technologies. Uh, talk about uh, businesses. Businesses need energy to digitize their value chain system. Talk about communications. They need energy to communicate effectively. Talk about uh, education. We need digital tools in schools. We need the uh, internet connection, internet connection in schools. And I'll tell you, Doctor, you and I need energy to cook that food, man. You know? Abs Let me just come uh, to you. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, well, now, I want you to talk to a Kenyan out there mm -hmm. who's, who doesn't know mm -hmm. tomorrow if they're able to buy this solar and also talk to the government in just making it easier for people to afford it. Yeah, the thing is, um, we're talking about... Um, um, cutting down trees, uh, to burn charcoal. Mm -hmm. But we are also talking about um, a society that is uh, affected by the crisis. Um, you, if, if, if you clearly analyze, you'll see that uh, a lot of charcoal business happens in asal areas. These are areas that have been affected very much with uh, weather, uh, extreme weather events, the drought and the floods. So what happens if your livelihood is failing? You turn on the next 
source of uh, livelihood to feed your family. You can't watch your children die when you have trees there that you can burn and sell charcoal and provide for them food. So we need to invest in renewable energy as a human right to be able to help communities that are even affected with this crisis build resilience. Uh, so that they do not have to turn to charcoal burning as an alternative source of livelihood when their uh, agricultural productivity or when their livestock uh, die. Uh, we need to have put in place measures uh, through uh, energy access that help them to build resilience to the livelihood that they have. Um, the livestock uh, keepers can continue uh, herding their livestock with irrigated grasslands and all that. Uh, and that helps uh, these communities, cushion these communities from these vulnerabilities that lead to uh, uh, extra uh, destruction of ecosystem that we depend on. Amos Wemanya, Senior Advisor, Powership Africa, and Dr. Andrew Wambua, Africa Voices Dialogue, as we have this conversation on renewable energy. Gentlemen, thank you very much for grazing Planet Action. This conversation definitely must continue as we continue to give our voices to you and to the government on what we expect moving forward and also to the international community that they have a role to play. But most importantly, that it is a collective responsibility if we are to smile with Mother Earth, because if not, Mother Earth is coming with a rough that we cannot handle. My name is Dennis Aceto. This is Planet Action. Enjoy the rest of your viewing next week, same time, same place.